Hi guys, I'm in a different spot today. Uh, I have two books that I'm going to read. Uh, the first one is called There's a Walk It in My Pocket by Dr. Seuss. It's a book of ridiculous rhymes. Let's see how this one goes. There's a Walk It in My Pocket by Dr. Seuss. Did you ever have the feeling there's a zamp in the lamp? Or a nink in the sink? Sometimes I'm quite certain there's a jerton in the curtain. And when I hear a talk, I know as locks behind the clock. And that zelf up on that shelf, I have talked to her myself. I like the zable on the table. But the bofa on the sofa acts as if he doesn't care. I like the jeeling on the ceiling. And the zower in the shower. And the nutbirds in the cupboards, I do like them a lot. But the nooth grush on my toothbrush, well, some are nice, but he is not. Stuck together. The yeps on the steps are always fun to have around. And so are many, many other friends that I have found. Like the teller and the neller and the geller and the deller and the beller and the weller and the zeller in the cellar. There's the yodel in the bottle, whom I do not wish to keep, but the zillow on my pillow always helps me fall asleep. That was kind of a silly one. All right, here we go. This one's a bit longer, so get nice and comfy. This one is called The Day the Crayons Quit by Drew Daywalt. Here we go. One day, let me see if I can get this a little different here, hang on. One day in class, Duncan went to take out his crayons and found a stack of letters with his name on them. Hey, Duncan, it's me, Red Crayon. We need to talk. You make me work harder than any of the other crayons. All year long, I wear myself out coloring. Fire engines, apples, strawberries, and everything else that's red. I even work on the holidays. I have to color all the Santas at Christmas and all the hearts and Valentine's Day. I need a rest, your overworked friend, red crayon. The crayons wrote letters to Duncan. Here we go. Oh, what color crayon is this one? Here we go. Dear Duncan, all right, listen. I love that I'm your favorite crayon for grapes, dragons, and wizard hats, but it makes me crazy that so much of my gorgeous colors goes outside of the lines. 
If you don't start coloring inside the line soon, I'm going to completely lose it. Your very neat friend, purple crayon. Dear Duncan, I'm tired of being called light brown or dark tan because I'm neither. I am beige and I am proud. I'm also tired of being second place to Mr. Brown Crayon. It's not fair that brown gets to be all the bears, ponies, and puppies, while the only thing I get are turkey dinners, if I'm lucky, and wheat. And let's be honest, when's the last time you saw a kid excited about coloring wheat? Your beige friend, Ooh, what do we have here? Hmm, Duncan, gray crayon here. You're killing me. I know you love elephants and I know that elephants are gray, but that's a lot of space to color all by myself. And don't even get me started on the rhinos, hippos, and humpback whales. You know how tired I am after handling one of those things? Such big animals. Baby penguins are gray, you know. So are very tiny rocks, pebbles. How about one of those once in a while to give me a break? Your very tired friend, gray crayon. Dear Duncan, you color with me, but why? Most of the time I'm on the same color as the page you're using me on, white. If I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even in the rainbow. I'm only used to color snow or to fill empty space between other things. And it leaves me feeling, well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, white crayon. Hi, Duncan. I hate being used to draw the outline of things, things that are colored in by other colors, all of which think they're brighter than me. It's not fair when you use me to draw a nice beach ball and then fill in colors with the ball, all the other crayons. How about a black beach ball sometime? Is that too much to ask? Your friend, black crayon. Dear Duncan, as green crayon, I'm writing for two reasons. One is to say I like my work loads of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs, and frogs. I have no problem and wish to congratulate you on a very successful coloring things green career so far. The second reason I write is for my friends yellow crayon and orange crayon who are no longer speaking to each other. Both crayons feel they should be the color of the sun. Please settle this soon because they're driving the rest of us crazy. Your happy friend, Green Crayon. Dear Duncan, Yellow Crayon here. I need you to tell Orange Crayon that I'm the color of the sun. I would tell him, but we are no longer speaking. And I can prove I'm the color of the sun too. Last Tuesday, you used me to color in the sun for the Happy Farm coloring book. In case you've forgotten, it's on page seven. You can't miss me. I'm shining down brilliantly on a field of yellow corn. Your pal and the true color of the sun, yellow crayon. Dear Duncan, I see yellow crayon already talked to you, the big whiner. Anyway, could you please tell Mr. Tattletail that he is not the color of the sun? I would, but we're no longer speaking. We both know I'm clearly the color of the sun because on Thursday you used me to color the sun on both the Monkey Island and the Meet the Zookeeper pages in your Day at the Zoo coloring book. Orange, you glad I'm here? Ha! Your pal and the real color of the sun, 
orange crayon. The crayons are fighting over the sun. Dear Duncan, it has been great being your favorite color this past year and the year before and the year before that. I have really enjoyed all the oceans, lakes, rivers, raindrops, rain clouds, and clear skies. But the bad news is, is that I'm so short and stubby, I can't even see out of the railing of the crayon box anymore. I need a break. Your very stubby friend, blue crayon. How tiny the blue crayon is now. Dear Duncan, okay, listen here, kid. You have not used me once this past year. It's because you think I'm a girl color, isn't it? Speaking of which, please tell your little sister I said thank you for using me to color in her little princess coloring book. I think she did fabulous job staying inside the lines. Now back to us. Could you please use me sometime to color the occasional pink dinosaur or monster or cowboy? Goodness knows they could use a little splash of color. Your unused friend, pink crayon. Hey, Duncan, it's me, Peach Crayon. Why did you peel the wrap ring off of me? Now I'm naked and I'm too embarrassed to leave the crayon box. I don't even have any underwear. How would you like to go to school naked? I need some clothes. Help your naked friend, Peach Crayon. <gasps> Peeled the wrapper off and now he doesn't want to come out. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. Well, poor Duncan just wanted to color and of course he wanted his crayons to be happy. And that gave him an idea. <gasps> Look at this beautiful picture. When Duncan showed his teacher his new picture, she gave him an A for coloring and an A plus for creativity. Let's look back at that picture for a minute. Let's look. It looks like he listened to all of his crayon friends, right? Because he didn't use all the regular colors that you would see. It looks like the water is green and the whale is orange, and he used some pink for a plane and a person, and whatever this guy is, I'm not sure, maybe that's a dino of some sort and a boat. And we have brown and orange and black. I see black used for a few different things. He did a great job listening to his crayon friends, don't you think? Okay, kiddos, those are our two stories for today. And we have some other things that are going to be happening this week. So we will see you soon. I hope you guys had a great Easter. Still really missing everybody. And I think we're going to set up a FaceTime again for this week too, okay? Bye, guys.